All right, hello, good evening everyone. My name is Brad Gottschall. I'm the Lower Paxton Township Manager. Uh, in typical fashion, I'm going to give a brief summary of this evening's agenda, uh, particularly for the benefit of those who may be watching at home on television. So this evening is a workshop session of the board. Uh, we have a number of items on the agenda, pretty, pretty busy uh, agenda item for a workshop. Um, a number of items uh, kicking off with first being the um, a presentation of Ordinance 2024-02, uh, which pertains to the, um, the establishment of uh, parameters of fire protection and rescue services, uh, that being for our, uh, the uh, fire uh, services within the township. After that, the board will uh, hear a presentation again on fire services, uh, this time the uh, fire and rescue services cooper cooperation agreement. Following that, the board will then uh, hear a number of presentations on the 2024 through 2025 Dauphin County Local Share Municipal Grant Program uh, as we do annually. Following that, then the board will hear first presentation on Ordinance 2024-05, uh, this approving the appointment of Portnoff Law Associates for the uh, collection of delinquent real estate taxes. And then following that, another item on that same uh, topic, uh, that being resolution 2024, an unnumbered resolution, uh, this being uh, to allow for the suspension of delinquent, the suspension of the collection of delinquent real estate taxes, um, again, being kind of in that same, uh, in that same motion. Uh, after that, the board will hear any last announcements, uh, make a motion to adjourn. And uh, with all that said, members of the board are seated and prepared to conduct business. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gottschall. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Supervisors workshop meeting to order uh, Tuesday, June the 11th at 7 o'clock. We are all here. Uh, we have the Pledge of Allegiance by Supervisor Thompson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We got a new gavel. Someone had stole it, and we have a new one tonight. <laughs> it's a much louder one. <laughs> Okay, um, we did meet in executive session tonight for information from the manager and we'll be meeting in executive session afterwards the meeting too. Before we get started this evening, um, we're gonna be adding another agenda item under the uh, share grants this evening. We're gonna be adding the Lingolstown softball. So they will be number nine on the list and according to what we have to do in the meeting um, with the rules, we have to announce that we're gonna be doing that. So with that, could I please have a motion Motion to add the Lingolstown softball for the uh, share grant. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, public comment. Is there anybody in the audience that is here for public comment? All I ask is if what you wanted to speak on, if it is on the agenda, if you could please wait to that agenda item. With that said, is there anybody in the audience for public comment? Yes, you can come to the podium. Um, we would need to know your name and your address, please. Susan Shabowski, 4333 Outer Bridge Crossing, Harrisburg, 17112. I was here before you uh, back in the fall with my show and tell for the uh, request for smaller trash and recycle toters. Okay. And at that time, we learned that that was already in the process, that some folks had been here prior to us, and that um, had also requested that, and it was in the works. And so I'm here tonight to say that in April, they were delivered, and I'm here to thank you. And wanted to let you know that our HOAs are thrilled that we don't have trash cans out in the streets or in front of our homes. We're particularly thrilled that we can get both our cars in our garage and that um, our super seniors, as I like to call them, since they're older than I am, um, are particularly thrilled because they can manage them. 
um, and they, they can get them in and out of their uh, facilities uh, safely. So just here tonight to say thank you. And you don't know how much thank we you. appreciate that. Isn't there yes. a but? Usually there's a but there. Yeah. <laughs> that We are so thankful to hear um, from the public, from your HOA. Um, we worked very hard at that. and. We haven't had any complaints since the smaller ones were delivered, but thank you so much for coming forth. Um, you're on television, so people are watching you, and hopefully they're saying thank you, too. Very kind. Yeah, thank very, you. very nice. We really appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, this trash contract was a learning process for everybody, believe me. Yeah. You're more than welcome to stay if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to. Oh, the Phillies. And, and okay. All right. Well, thank you again. We really appreciate it. Okay. Is there anybody else under public comment? We're good. Okay. Uh, chairman and board uh, member comments. Uh, board members, do we have any comments this evening? Okay. I have two. Um, Laura Paxton Township has just been moved up to the number two in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania townships of the second class. So we are the, lar the second largest in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We have also been moved up to the 13th largest municipality in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, so with the new statistics, we are at 54,807 um, residents. So our township is growing. Um, people are coming here to work, to live, and to play. So we are trying to do as much as what we can to have the new residents come in and it's showing that they love coming to Lower Paxton Township. So we're proud of that. And Very we proud. also know, uh, Chair, that that comes with challenges and we're not necessarily looking to bring more people in, um, <laughs> but the zoning decisions made years ago uh, allowed for development. But just to point out that we're very proud that um, we are, you know, big and muscular but we also know that this does bring challenges and we try to stay on top of them and we do offer a lot i mean we have 16 parks and we're in the workings of our 17th park also we have a great police department we have three great fire departments so um, we do have lots to offer here in lower paxton township okay anybody else mr gutchall do you have anything i do not okay thank you Okay, we're going to have the first presentation of Ordinance 2024-02, establishing the perimeters of fire protection and rescue services within the township and generally adopting standard operating procedures. Uh, director Kashiba. Madam Chair, members of the board, Adam Kashiba. I'm your Director of Public Safety, for those of you who don't know, watching on TV. I'm here today to discuss the, first of all, the ordinance and then secondly, the uh, cooperation agreement. Uh, I just want to remind everyone, kind of take us back a bit. We had a study that the Board of Supervisors here agreed upon and took quite some time to complete, conducted by Municipal Resources Incorporated, MRI. And the study was completed in June of 2023. And it was a quite a voluminous study. And we were able to chunk that apart, so to speak, and, and get it into manageable pieces that, on items that we wanted to move forward with immediately relating to the overall um, study itself and the many, many recommendations. What we're going to talk about here tonight and we're asking for consideration is, uh, you know, the, the uh, ordinance and the cooperation agreement uh, was number one on uh, the list of 11 recommendations from MRI as we started to move through here. So I know it took uh, now a year to move forward with this, but that was done through many, many meetings with the Public Safety Committee and those tasked with uh, assisting the committee, the subcommittees, and preparing the documents you have before you um, in their entirety. Uh, it was a lot of work put in by all the members of the fire companies uh, assigned to the committees and back and forth comments from um, from staff and as legal counsel as well and I believe we have some very decent documents that are going to move us into uh, the next phases as we talk about the size of our organization the size of our township uh, these are necessary documents to basically establish formal agreements um, that are going to provide certain services not only for the township but also certain services guaranteed to the three individual fire companies that are part of the ordinance and the cooperation agreement. 
So the first one you have in, uh, that's up here is the ordinance um, in front of you, 24-02. And again, this is formalization of, of what we've been working on in uh, our meetings and with three fire companies. And essentially uh, what this says is the Township of Second Class Code Act 60 of 1995 gives the authority uh, to the Board of Supervisors to do certain things with the volunteer fire companies uh, within its jurisdiction. And that is formally laid out as we um, travel down through the document. Uh, it also gives the supervisors, and it's formally prepared as the third one down in the whereas, uh, the Board of Supervisors in adopting ordinances and creating rules and regulations for the administration and operation of volunteer fire companies. And, it, and again, I won't go through every piece of this, uh, but I said that there are protections um, for the fire companies as we move through here. If we have new new mandates, uh, that's covered on page two under the uh, document, under two, um, four. And it, again, it's quite lengthy, but the long and short of the document is that it is formally establishing and recognizes the Bureau of Fire, uh, positions within the Bureau of Fire, my authority as the Director of Public Safety, the authority of the, the Deputy Fire Chief, and um, many other um, formal areas between the Township, the Bureau of Fire, which is the overarching umbrella organization for the three fire companies, and providing fire protection for Lower Paxton Township. Okay. Are there any questions from the board for Director Kashiba? Now, just I know uh, how much work was put into this by you and the fire companies and companies are on board. Yes, sir. So uh, again, working through the public safety, everything that you will see come through public safety to you uh, has been voted on accordingly in public safety in the public meetings of public safety. Public safety committee. That's yep. correct. And um, the public safety committee did vote unanimously to bring these documents before you. Great, thank you. We just want to make sure everybody's on board. Yes, ma'am. So that's the main thing. Okay, all right. That's the first presentation. Uh, the next one is the first presentation of Fire and Rescue Services Cooperation Agreement. Again, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, uh, again, formalizing the, the agreement between the three fire companies, uh, laying out what the authority of the board is under the Township of the Second Class Code, referencing back to the ordinance that we just spoke about and uh, essentially laying out what is the res financial responsibilities of the township um, and the services being provided by the cooperating agencies or volunteer fire companies, which in this particular case for those out there, Colonial Park, uh, Paxtonia and Linglestown Fire Companies are the cooperating agencies that are um, working with the Township Bureau of Fire to uh, provide services here in the township. Any questions from the board members? No? Good. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We, like Chris said, it took a long time, but sure. we finally made it, and everybody's on board. That's all that matters. So, Man. thank okay. you. Yeah. And Deputy Chief Graham, thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Your sidekick, Adam. <laughs> And for those of you that are here tonight and those of you who are watching, um, last week um, we did okay that we will be buying uh, three new pumpers. So each one of the fire companies will each uh, have a new pumper. How long that's going to take, we're not too sure, but we are going, well, actually, I guess they were ordered Tuesday night by midnight. So good. Okay. All righty. The next thing on the agenda will be the presentations for the 2024-2025 Dauphin County Local Share Municipal Grant Program. And this is through um, Dauphin County, and it is through the casino money that is available. So number one would be Catholic Charities Diocese. Is there someone here to present? Okay. Um, if you could please uh, come to the, oh, you have some paperwork? Okay. Yeah. And if you could just come to the podium, and, and again, we'll need your name and your address. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christopher Meehan. I am Director of Development with Catholic Charities. Address is 4800 Union Deposit Road, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 17111. Uh, tonight, we are here to ask for the township's support of our application for the local share um, municipal grants program for 2024-2025. Specifically, we are seeking $75,000 through that grant program, which will be used to purchase a new 15 passenger van for our Evergreen House. Evergreen House is a residential program of Catholic Charities. It is a program uh, that helps women in recovery from drug and alcohol abuse. Uh, again, we are seeking $75,000 to support the purchase of a new passenger van. Uh, part of the services we provide to the clients at Evergreen House uh, include transportation. All of the clients there have to go to an NA or an AA meeting every day. Uh, the majority, most if not all of our clients do not have transportation, so it is incumbent on Catholic Charities to provide that transportation service. Our current passenger van is 14 years old. Uh, it is used very heavily daily, and as you can imagine, after 14 years, uh, the wear and tear on that vehicle, it's starting to add up. So it is time for us to purchase a new vehicle, and we are hoping that uh, a grant award will enable us to do that. Uh, I would be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Where's the Evergreen House at? Uh, it is at our St. Samuel Center. It is, the address is 120 Willow Road uh, here in Harrisburg. It, that facility is home to three residential programs, uh, Evergreen House, as I mentioned, as well as Interfaith Shelter for Homeless Families, and Lord's House Maternity Home. We have three programs under one roof. It used to be Colonial Pines Nursing Home, mm -hmm. if you're familiar yep, with Yeah, off of Locust Lane. Yeah. Yes, good. Uh, board members, do you have any questions? Any questions? Okay. Oops. Yes, ma'am. What else do you do in terms of fundraising? Well, as Director of Development, that is my main responsibility, to raise funds for Catholic <laughs> Charities. Uh, in addition to various grants that we apply for not just this program, but for all our programs, uh, I solicit both individuals and businesses throughout the year. We do a series of direct mail appeals, as well as e email solicitations, social media campaigns, as well as a series of special events throughout the year. Uh, for example, we have our golf tournament coming up on Monday. We do a big fundraising dinner. We participate in the Highmark Walk for a Healthy Community, uh, Lancaster County Extraordinary Give, York County Give Local York. We do a Lenten lunch program. Uh, we rely very heavily on the diocese as well as the other individual churches throughout our diocese. So we, we're we looking uh, basically under every rock <laughs> to raise funds. So. Okay. Thank you. I do want to mention that uh, the township has supported three of our past applications uh, in spring 2023, fall 2023, uh, where we received two awards and we have a award or an app from spring of 2024 that we are awaiting decision on. So we appreciate your past support and we hope that will continue. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for Good your time, to you. appreciate it. Okay, second one is the Pan Ram Foundation Nutripax program. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Joanne Scheip, a grant writer for the Panther Ram Foundation Nutripax. We're a weekend backpack food program that works within the Central Dauphin School District. Because the majority of our in infrastructure and the administration <coughs> operates within Lower Paxton Township, we're requesting co-applicant status with you again this evening. Our mission, the who we are and what we do, sorry, I talk with my hands, um, continues as in your pa years past as described in the written documentation we've provided. Tonight, I'd like to briefly fill you in on the why and the how of Nutripax, a huge part of which can easily fall in the category of empathy. Uh, but first, some data to support why we have increased our request from previous years. Over 55% of the student population in our school district is identified as low income, defined in 2023 as a family of four, earning less than $45,000 of taxable income. In the two years since the end of the pandemic's, the end of pandemic support, enrollment in our program went from 10 to 16% of the student population from the district. We closely track our weekly distributions and have found two additional telling data points uh, on need within our community. Uh, we have the same number of registered students 
last school year and the previous school year. So for two years since pandemic support ended, same number of enrollment. However, we have a weekly track of how many pickups we have, how many backpacks we, we make. We've gone from 522 the previous weekly, 522 from the previous year. This year we averaged 700 packs per week pickup. Historically, toward the end of the year, we start to see a drop off in pickups and we have not seen that in the last two years. So that tells us um, there is a continuing and hopefully not growing, but a continuing need. We're 100% volunteer. So the money we raise, including this grant, we're requesting for assistance tonight, goes primarily purchasing food from the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. A typical weekend pack costs us $12.43. The retail equivalent, if you look at it from a generic food standpoint, would be $28.27. That gives each child two breakfasts, two lunches, two snacks, three dinners. So they have food to get them through the entire weekend. During the pandemic, we were able to obtain milk at no charge. Since it has cost us a dollar per half gallon. Starting in September, it will be a dollar sixty per half gallon. So in four years, our milk cost has gone from zero to fifteen thousand five hundred, twenty one thousand seven hundred dollars, and we're projecting this next year thirty six thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars for milk. In addition to purchased shelf stable food, the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank opens their refrigerated perishable food supply to us on the day of our distribution. The majority of this is provided to us at no cost. This past year, we received about two and a half tractor trailer loads of food. Additionally, the Midwest Food Bank has been supporting us since they came to the area. This year, we received nearly three tractor trailer loads of shelf stable and frozen food at no cost. Which leads me back to the empathy in our community. A few examples. A wholesaler saw our news, a local news piece on TV from the community aid grant that we received through Lower Paxton Assistance. Since then, they've been supplying us 250 dozen eggs per week, saving us $4,000 in just a half a year of operation. Lower Paxton Township Police grew beards to raise money for us. School personnel dressed down on Fridays to raise money for us. Local businesses and individuals donate $500 each for 31 weeks for milk. Faith groups, retirees, former administrators, student groups, our community show up every week to unload trucks, pack and deliver backpacks, 6,200 volunteer hours. Teachers play basketball to raise money for us. Elementary students donate their change for their classmates. We appreciate all their support and ask you continue, you continue yours so that we are able to ensure no student in our district goes hungry. Any questions? Board, do you have any questions? Yeah, how much uh, are we asking for? Seventy-five. We're asking for seventy-five thousand dollars. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we're either out for the summer or getting ready to get out. What happens to the program? We run through the school district. I'm sorry, you're new. Um, we run strictly through the school district. Um, we don't have the funds to run a summer program. The school district, uh, I should be clear, we're not part of the school district. They give us a lot of assistance. We use some of their facilities, but we are financially independent. Um, the school district is running a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I believe, breakfast and lunch program this summer for their students. So we run 31 weeks during the school year. Do they actually come to the school or is that a, or do they actually go inside the school to get those or do for they lunch? do a drive through uh, for yes, breakfast? It's and not lunch. like the pandemic where they had grab and goes, although the schools I know would prefer that. But um, the way the uh, program we understand is structured is um, it has to be prepared food. So they come into the school, the cafeterias are available for uh, breakfast and lunch this year. Wow, and that's through the, through the whole summer then? Um, starts, I think, in a couple weeks. But yes, okay. it's through this, wow. the Central Dolphin School District. I think it's being done at um, uh, CD Middle? No, CD East, the high school, and Tri-C, I think, are okay. the two facilities where that's available. Okay, good. Great. Any other questions, Board? Yeah, the cost of milk it increased significantly. Is that basically as a result of inflation or... 
Um, well, when we were getting it uh, for no cost, that was during the pandemic. So uh, things were very different. Uh, so uh, data isn't exactly comparative. Um, prior to that, I think it was a little less than a dollar. Uh, that was just when I was first coming onto the advisory board. Um, so it's through the food bank. Uh, it's a local milk supplier. It's through the food bank. So it is at a reduced cost, of course. Um, um, but the food bank also has pressures. I mean, they're also looking for grants to, to supplement. So um, I guess they just got to a point where it was where they had to increase the price. And, and it's any any child at any of the schools mm -hmm. as long as they are in the school district, right? Exactly. No matter what school uh, they're at. So we have okay. progressed. This program originally started by um, one of the social workers at one of the elementary schools noticed that kids were coming in school on Monday hungry. That's how it started. Uh, we now service every single building school in the Central Dauphin School District, including Tech, uh, Dauphin County Tech, if they are a Central Dauphin School District uh, ch student, um, we, we also support them. Cyber School. Mm -hmm. Joanne, how many volunteers do you have? Um, weekly, uh, <laughs> our volunteer base uh, is o over 200. They, they don't all show up at one time. Mm -hmm. We also have the students come in and pack. Um, uh, the special needs groups within the school district actually come and use packing as, um, as a teaching uh, tool for their kids. Uh, so the s sports students, uh, sports kids come in. So a lot of people that need service hours for their, for their um, um, applications to college and, and beyond uh, come in and volunteer. So it, it runs the gamut who, who yeah. volunteers. Okay. All right, we're good, everybody? Yep. Okay, thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have Coons Memorial Park Swim Club. <laughs> good evening. Uh, my name is Danette Blank, and I'm presently the president of Coons Memorial Swim Club. And um, first of all, I want to say thank you. You guys have been very supportive of us in the past, so I appreciate that. But some of you newcomers um, want to give you a little bit of a background. Our pool is 65 years old, and it's uh, located in one of the township's parks. It's located actually in Coons Park. We don't have an official address. We are in the corner of Laporte and uh, Coons Park Road. That makes it very difficult to have things delivered because they like addresses, but we don't have one. Um, but I want to stress that um, we have counted up and we are going to probably touch the lives of 8,000 people this summer alone through our daycares, our membership, our day pass visitors, um, learn to swim, which last year we had to say we couldn't do that because we didn't have guards to do that. We are back doing our Red Cross Learn to Swim. That'll be uh, two weeks in June and two weeks in July. And then we have just added a TOTS program with their parents because they had so many comp um, wants to do that. So we're back to doing that. Um, we also have um, special interest groups that come. And I just lean back because Evergreen that you just heard from contacted us and wants to bring their women uh, to the pork to the pool and we are giving them a discounted rate to come to the community pool um, so that's, that's kind of how we fit in here uh, we have the local daycares and the learn to swim all within this community um, we are able to do some things we're a small uh, volunteer group we only have five people on the board we'd love to have more because it's a lot of work to keep a pool going especially when they're 65 years old but um, we've done some small things that we were able to do um, new lounge chairs uh, a couple of new tables we did a new website those types of things but what we really need is a new diving board so that it is safe last year we applied for the same request um, and you gave us some money. That's not gonna get us our diving board. Um, last year it was 50,000, now the, the guy is um, proposing 55,000, and we have 11,000 towards that. So 
Um, we are looking for other avenues. I just submitted tonight, um, a member of the Lower Paxton Lions Club uh, submitted a, a grant request to them. Um, the Coons Pool Board has also decided, you know, we're able to give some money put aside for, for that, but we really are in need of a new safe diving board. I don't honestly know how old it is, but it's old. I think I jumped on it. So, um, so we have on our part, we have increased our membership costs. We've increased um, our day passes up to from 10 to 15 um, to kind of help with some of all of the adjustments but we also then as i said you know the guards are harder to come by we've had to pay them more um that type of thing but um it's just a request resubmitting pretty much of last year's so to get the same diving board any questions uh, just just a comment uh, you said that we gave you and well just, it, it was supported it was the the, the grant yeah. i'm sorry through this process yeah, yeah it's figured a lot of people sitting at home think well yeah, no, through the grant process, through the me, local me share grant. Norm. Yes, you supported <laughs> us through that process. Right. Thank you. And, the, and then that's and then it's Dolphin County. That's the commissioners right. that choose how much everybody gets. Uh, but th this is the third year, I think, that I've heard about the diving board that you guys mm. have come. Three years ago, you came. I think you asked for fifty thousand three years ago I, I know I know last you weren't year there, because the, 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 the year, three years ago we were requesting and you guys worked with us because we wanted um, some um, pumps I believe or re reallocation we had to do some reallocation because we had a large water bill sure do you through. know if you got any how much you got uh, I guess you wouldn't know that because it wasn't on there but three years ago how much did you get from Dolphin County I can't remember off the okay. top of my head, okay. but we had we to reapply something. that to, and you guys worked with us on that. Right. Okay. And you're the only uh, public pool in Lower Paxton Township, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, for you people to know, that is that we offer people that that are do not have a membership, they can come in, mm -hmm. and it's a very affordable entertainment in your township, in, in our township. Mm -hmm. So. And do you take non-residents too, Deanna? Uh huh. Yes. Okay. We don't ask where they live oh oh okay i didn't know if there was a special for resident and for non-resident no okay mm -hmm. um when the friendship was under the township we that was there they had to show their pass and we gave them a discount with that oh okay but not not now okay how much is the day pass fifteen dollars mm -hmm. and what else do you do to raise funds well that's what i said in our with our membership and our daycare and our um day passes and we do charge the daycares we have the concession stand um we will be trying to do some fundraising um in the sense of um going to go out and ask some some of the community leaders that type of thing but we do not have an actual um fundraising arm, arm. we're we're we're, avail we're only open th three months of the summer and um we have five board members so when well, you had said that the board members are have donated also oh yes yeah mm -hmm. would you speak a little about the daycare the daycares yes. um it's which ones one. i'm sorry what there's more than one daycare yes um we have well first of all the lower paxton township daycares they come um we also have bethesda mission who they come um we have this is interesting susquehanna township daycares come um and we just opened one up i can't think of that those are the three that um are listed in the in the in the grant and they um come um two days a week okay the other thing i didn't mention is we do have a very strong swim team piranhas we have about 90 to 100 members that are swimming um at our pool wow are they swimming in competition yes Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We're at the the lowest division, but we're out there, okay. and they don't really want to move up because they like winning. <laughs> They're participating. Yeah. <laughs> and now the big question is: Mrs. Weasling going to be doing the? Uh, yes. Is she? Oh my yes. gosh! She yes. taught me how to swim. <laughs> yep. 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 Good for her. Yeah. Good. Now she's her. working very closely with with I Patty. Off that diving board. Yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. Awesome. 
It um, is old. It, it is. Uh, right. mm, no, I think we've had one <laughs> since Robin yeah, and I I'm were sure. there. But um, <laughs> but yes, it, it, it's still it, it's due. It's very much due. Yeah. So well, good for her. And it needs to be moved. The diving board needs to be moved. Oh, so you're going to be relocating it mm -hmm. also then? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Are there any other questions, board? Is Good. the pool now open? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's open and the moving of the diving board? Oh, happen. we couldn't do that until after it closes. It's probably in the fall um, that we would like to do that or spring of next year. But, no, it can't be done while we're, while we're open. I okay. hate to ask this question, but... When was the last time the pool was uh, completely renovated? Completely renovated? I don't think it's ever been completely renovated. Never. Okay. Um, we take um, we take kind of projects at a time. Um, we were hoping to be able to paint um, one of the pools, the, the dive pool this year. The weather did not cooperate with that. We had so much rain that we were pulling it out and... <laughs> God put more, <laughs> we pull it out. So we just didn't have time to get the bottom of the, of the dive pool um, painted this season. But it, sh it that is something that we wanted to do. We've uh, painted the whole place through. Um, we've had uh, coping put around the lap pool. It really should be done around the dive pool. But um, everything costs money. I mean, it, it's, it's very expensive to maintain a, a pool, let alone a 65-year-old pool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. well, I have one thing. Just oh, that being said, sorry. I remember when you came and did that your last presentation. I just want to, you know, congratulate you. I'm sure it's it's not easy to manage a pool that is that old that had that many issues to come and take on, you know, that that type of a project. But it seems like you guys are really you're doing it and you're you're turning it around and you're really doing a good job with that. We're so hanging. I want to congratulate you because <laughs> it seems you know I, I don't know if you hear that enough, but but it sounds like you're really. You're turning it around, so thank you. Thank good you. Good job. Yeah, we yeah. need to hear that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's. It All sounds right. like you've got a lot of great programs, and you're 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 pushing through it. So. Okay. All right. Thank Keep you. Keep it up. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Deanna. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have Lingolstown Baseball Association. Um, I'm seeing Mr. Gutshaw on my agenda. Says your name. Is that you? That's just the they titled the document that oh okay <laughs> is oh, okay i didn't know if you were presenting for no. <laughs> um is there somebody here uh, from lingolstown baseball association <laughs> no and i'm okay i'm not i'm, I'm not aware of this project at all so i, I okay. couldn't yeah all I it says is uh, it dugout you. project <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like they're looking, from what I'm reading on my paper, they're looking for 85000 um, to do dugouts for the Lingolstown Baseball Association. So this is the dugout that there was an issue with me? Right. Remember, we had to take them down because um, they were not safe at all. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty. And we, and we didn't have a choice. We had to, yeah, they had yeah, to come yeah. down. So are they still they using temporary? Do you know if they're doing temporary? Do you know, temporary? Brad, off the top of your head? I, I, I'm not quite sure. I mean, that that's where we last left it uh, a season ago. I, I, I'm not sure what um, kind of what they have gearing up for this season or, or whatnot. But um, okay. I, don't, I'm, okay. I actually don't even know when baseball starts. I have to. It's <laughs> so started. it's already started. started. So yeah, yeah, they got so they got little started. I know of it. So. Okay. We haven't heard from them, so they must have something. Okay. Uh, Partnership for Hope. Is there someone in the audience for Partnership for Hope? Okay, um, partnership at, from Hope is Home and Baby Goods, and they're requesting 54000 for the gaming grants. Okay, uh, next we have Laura Paxson Township Parks and Recreation. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, I'll take that one. Um, actually, this, uh, this project uh, particularly uh, follows up on a, a presentation we had last week uh, with regard to this same project uh, and that is um, uh, improvements to our lingo park um, as you are aware um, the board a number of years ago had endeavored uh, to um, really reimagine and reinvest into the park system for which uh, a number of years had been kind of uh, laid dormant if you will uh, so we had a, a, a quite a sprawling um, 
need uh, throughout our park system. Uh, and the board had um, at that time um, kind of, like I said, reinvested into our park system. Um, by the time we're done um, with this o overarching and comprehensive parks uh, project, um, every one of our parks will have had some sort of improvement uh, made to it um, over a number of years here uh, in pretty quick succession. So um, this project at Lingo Park is just a part of that. Um, I say just, but uh, it's a very big part of that uh, ongoing project we have. Uh, the township through this request is going to be uh, asking for $180,859 um, and that is to um, add to Lingo Park uh, a number of um, pickleball courts, um, an ADA path, uh, a stormwater project, um, uh, landscaping, and uh, just a, a, a general sprucing up of, of Lingle Park. Um, if you recall, uh, the board had recently um, allowed for an expansion at Lingle Park to include a cricket pitch. Uh, so Lingle Park is becoming um, a rather heavily utilized park and uh, this request will continue, us, uh, continue to allow us to uh, make improvements there and, and keep going with the park improvements. Okay, board members, do you have any questions for Mr. Gutchell? And if we don't get the money? Uh, if we don't get the money, that's a great question. Uh, finance director, I, we have, uh, we'll have to make that up uh, through another grant program or? Essentially, essentially yes, yes. Okay. We, have a, we have some projects that have been unsuccessful in the grant program and they stay in the discussion and we just ultimately turn around in the same programs or similar type programs and try and raise those funds alternatively. Do we, is an option that we just end up using our parks and rec money? Th that can be uh, an eventual option. We do have some, <coughs> excuse me, fee and lieu monies that have accumulated as well as some remaining designated rescue act fund savings that we could consider as well. But again, the, the board's goal has really been to maximize those grant potentials to, right. to forward projects. Right. Good. Okay, thank you. All right, next we have technology for me. It's like we have somebody here. And sir, you'll, you'll have access to, to that PowerPoint. I believe it's on the um, desktop there. It should be. That Her t-shirt tipped us through. off. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair and Board. Uh, let's see. Can we have your name, please? Merrick Green, 4075 Linglestown Road, okay. seven, 17112. Um, trying to figure out. I'm not a fancy. Uh, oh, I don't have a keyboard. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, yeah. once again, I'm Merrick Green. Uh, my nonprofit is Technology for Me, and what we're doing is bridging the digital divide here in central Pennsylvania. So I start with a problem statement. Um, I moved to central Pennsylvania to Harrisburg, uh, Lower Paxton Township, like about two years ago after retirement from the Air Force after 23 years. Thank you for serving. Thank you. Uh, and one of the things that was uh, really evident to me in my 23 years is that every day I came to work, I used some piece of technology to do my job, whether it was on an airplane or in, uh, in a building called an Air Operations Center. Uh, and when we get, we get new airmen coming in, uh, they had a steep learning curve to, you know, take technology that we had to do our jobs and apply it to a day-to-day -day job. So since retirement, I find myself with a little bit of time on my hands in my basement. Uh, so what I've been doing here in central Pennsylvania is working with schools, uh, Nativity School in Harrisburg, SciTech, John Harris, and uh, Steelton. Uh, and one of the things that I've done is essentially uh, plant myself in these schools and figure out how to give these kids access to technology, but not only access to technology, but access to everything that's in my head that has helped me uh, be successful. So today I was out at Steelton, I gave away four laptops to the kids there, uh, and I would like to do more. So last year I applied for the gaming grant, they gave me $12,000, and I plan to use that money this year to continue my program. So. The program not only comes with me giving away laptops, but it comes with an eight-week program that I essentially take these kids through. Uh, because in my interactions with them, simple things like, hey, let's make this Excel sheet bigger, and they're just kind of like, how do I do that? 
And so we give them technology, but we don't really show them how to use it. And so I know every day, you know, you, you all probably have some of the same things. We get new software all the time. We get new hardware all the time. But I think that we aren't really giving the kids what they need to, to use the software. And when they step out into the world, as you know, it's heavily, heavily technologically dependent. And if you don't know how to use it, how to access it, or you're afraid of it, you will get left behind. And I think we saw that during the pandemic when a lot of the kids for the first time got laptops when they got sent home from school and they're just looking at them and what do they do? So the digital divide is this space where you're given technology in school, but then once you get out of school and for a summer, you go home and you have none. And so you spend the entire summer trying to play catch up where you can learn from the internet, you can learn with AI, there are all these ways that you can learn. And so I'm trying to chip away at it, and it's called the Bridge and the Digital Divide program. Uh, and if you're following what's happening in Pennsylvania, there is a, um, big initiative um, to bring about 1.6 billion in federal funding to bridge the digital divide in, uh, in this state alone. And there are a lot of programs, and when I did my research, a lot of them are based in Philadelphia. There aren't too many in Harrisburg uh, or in the city proper, but I'm trying to figure out ways to find the, the people to have the conversations to figure out how we can make this um, bridge a little bit closer. So the solution is really me and the time that I have on my hands now that I'm retired, uh, continue to go into the schools, continue to network and meet with people who are running programs with kids and uh, my board. And so I'm asking for about $53,000 to buy roughly 30 Microsoft Surface tablets. And, and so my plan was to give 10 to different schools or two to different schools, but the key to that is not just giving the kids technology, but it's also that eight week program that I run virtually on Zoom so I don't have to actually go into a school. And they use a device to talk to me and I show them everything they need to do. And it's an eight week uh, curriculum that we go through. And I have a, uh, an intern, a student at CCA right now, and he was actually texting me earlier today, and I'm teaching him how to build websites. I'm teaching them how to use technology to, to, to do applications, apply for, for grants and all these things. And then there's another pro part of this program that I wanted to implement this year for veterans because I'm a veteran and I know that veterans have issues navigating the VA workspace. Uh, so part of this program in 2025 is going to uh, work with the tiny home program and work with veterans in our community to help them uh, find that space. So my board of directors, my wife is uh, on my board of directors. This is Maya. She's the reason why I'm here because she's from central Pennsylvania. I'm from um, <laughs> but uh, this is my board of directors. And then I have uh, people that are mentors and guests that help me pour into the kids. So if there's something that I don't know, something about cybersecurity or some piece of technology, there's somebody that I could reach out to that can help a kid understand it and uh, provide them a resource that they might not have. So that's it for my program, Bridging the Digital Divide, and myself. Any questions? Board, do you have any questions? So we can thank your wife that you're in central Pennsylvania. Yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Pamela. So um, are you, what is your feeling on teaching children how to code? I think I heard the, the CEO of NVIDIA say that with AI, the new code is the human language. I think it's important, though, because the basics of how computers work is all code, which is why when I talk about uh, using Excel spreadsheets or using any type of spreadsheets to do simple calculations, when you teach kids how to do that, that's the genesis of it. But I do believe that you should understand and learn how basic code works in order to read it, because inevitably you're looking at it, trying to figure out how to make your box go from four to eight sections, and sometimes you can't just drag and drop it. You actually have to just type the code in. So I believe that you should teach kids how to code. But your program currently doesn't include that? It does toward the, the seventh or eight week. We talk about some HTML basics and we talk about some JavaScript basics. We don't get heavy in the coding, but we do talk about some basics of coding. Sir, the, um, do we know that this doesn't uh, duplicate what they're doing in the schools? From what I have uh, heard from my time at the Nativity School and what I've done at Steelton and SciTech and John Harris, it does not. Um, the kids do get some practical um, computer skills training, but not to the level that um, that basically I'm trying to teach them how to problem solve. Because I know, because I was on the school board for eight years, and I know they it was a 
priority. And I just would hate, you know, if taxpayers are paying for this over mm -hmm. here and then we're paying a nonprofit, essentially, we're giving money to a nonprofit that's duplicating kind of what's already being done. That's probably hard to quantify, I know, but I know for Central Dolphin, that was quite a quite a uh, undertaking and not a not a cheap one mm -hmm. for one, the taxpayers yeah so one of the requirements from our program is that you have to meet the financial um limitations of the financial stipulations in it so you know we're not giving computers to people who have computers already there are some requirements that say you do not have technology in your home you meet a certain financial um you know income level and that we're you know we, you fill out the application our board is reviewing the applications we're not just giving computers to people that show up so there are some requirements that we're looking at to make sure that we're getting the computers in the hands of the people who need them and you know really can't afford them and want to learn more about technology that's the other part of it too yeah i think that's the key right because they're coming to you mm -hmm. and applying so you know that they they really want it and they might not know about it but they want to learn more about it that's pretty amazing so uh, that's that's great good job thank you yeah what are your summer hours so my summer summer hours are like 10 to about three so i'm very flexible like i said i um, i'm retired i work in my basement so my summer hours are um until so the eight week pro the eight week program on zoom would be 10 to 3 well, it'll be about it's about three hours a day, so 10 to 12 um, or 10 to 1. You know, I'm flexible with the kids' schedule because I know some of them either have jobs or they have something to do. Um, so I'm flexible with the kids as far as their time goes. And that's the other thing is that they all can't meet at a certain time. I'm flexible enough to meet whenever they can. Okay. So I normally meet them where they are. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I guess I have one more question. What's your goal like? two years from now you want to have more employees you want to have how many how many you know students do you want to have so I think my goal would be uh, if a kid graduated from LSU uh, that's where I went to school right and, a, and majored in, in computer science and they basically came back and they said hey mr. green your program that you put me through uh, sparked an interest in uh, computer science or whatever and look I got my degree now and so I think what I'm really trying to do is plant seeds mm -hmm. now so that kids will be successful later on in life mm -hmm. but you had said about the veterans so you know so I'm, I'm thinking about you know what it seems like you want to expand. I do. So the, the first year, you know, we focused on kids. And this year, uh, with the tiny home program that's happening down uh, near PennDOT, yep. mm -hmm. I want to try to get into there. And, and it won't be the same because I know that um, I can't just give laptops to veterans, sure. but at least give them, an ac give them access. So if they needed to get on my VA or do whatever programs they needed to do, I could show up, hand them some laptops, and we can kind of work, work through it together. Yeah. yeah, or maybe they could have one that's there, you know, in each house or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And can I ask just because you have the budget <clears throat> on there, is the, board, uh, is the board of directors, is that a paid position or is that just – it is not so the volunteer no yeah it's all volunteer so all these people uh, my board uh, that board funding that you see is that that's them kind of pouring into the the nonprofit they're not paid they're all volunteers gotcha so what's the uh, youngest that you'll take in the program in the eight-week zoom program so the youngest that I will take is so the kids at nativity school I want to say they're in eighth grade so they're about um, 12, 13 years old. So that's the youngest. I think uh, any younger than that, then they, they, you know, it's a steep learning curve for what we're trying to do. So the laptop that you give them or tablet, whatever, um, is that for them to keep during that's, the school year? So it's, it's for them to it's keep? It's for them to keep okay. forever. Okay. So yeah, wow. they keep, they keep it during the summer, during the school year. And I know some schools do give them technology, but like I said, during the summer, most of the time, like today at Steelton, they, you know, in their library, they have all the, the laptops just kind of stacked up in the library and none of the kids get to go home with them. They, they're mm -hmm. there in the school for the summer because they don't get to take them home. Great. Okay. And we all good board? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank Sorry. you. Okay, uh, we have Lingolstown uh, girls softball. Hi, I'm Jamie Meyer. I'm at 4416 Mars Avenue in Lingolstown, 17112. 
Um, and I am here to uh, represent our softball um, association in Linglestown. And right now, every uh, like I'm a volunteer position and I'm a very new member of the board. And so this is my first time requesting grant money from you guys. So um, bear with me if I do something wrong. But you're um, okay. You're okay. <laughs> um, we are. Um, we do from T-ball and six U all the way up to sixteen to eighteen U, if the desire is there. Um, we just finished our spring season, and we had. Um, I can't remember how many kids we had, but it was a great season. We had more kids this spring than we did last spring. So we're um, a growing organization looking to um, continue our growth in the fall and through next spring and through the years to come. Um, but with that growth requires um, field upkeep and maintenance and um, new, new dirt that goes into our um, fields. So I am here requesting um, $12,000 and that is going to help us uh, with a tractor where we can um, like keep the dirt, like um, rake the, rake the mm -hmm. dirt on the fields. The, the current tractor that we are using is a, really old. <laughs> And it's requiring a lot of maintenance and upkeep. Okay. And so um, in order to give our girls um, in Lower Paxton the best possible sports experience, we need to have better equipment that okay. doesn't break down on us, um, that allows us uh, the ability to keep our fields open um, where the girls can just uh, grow and like learn to love softball. Um, the other thing that the money will go to, towards is we need caging in our storage bin, storage locker. Um, we've had some um, issues of uh, where our storage is located. There's been um, some attempted break-ins or stuff like that. So we just want to put some caging in to keep our equipment safe, um, maintain our dugouts, you know, just maintenance overall for our girls. So. That is what I am here asking for today. Um, and I would love to have any questions. Yeah. Any board members? Where where do you play? Coons, uh, Coons Park Coons. is our, yeah, is our so home base. Do you not share, and I'm sorry, it's been a while since my kids play. That's do okay. you share fields with the baseball? We don't. No, we have mm -hmm. two separate fields from baseball. But even like, like a tractor, you don't share? No, it's completely separate. So it's two, uh, two associations. Two different associations, yeah. I understand that, yeah. but I, I, uh, I would just think it's, it's one, <laughs> not it's field, one park. but it's yeah. one park. Mm -hmm. And to have two different big machinery like that, mm -hmm. I'm surprised. Um, and I know it's complicated, and you're a volunteer. Yeah, yeah I'm and you're new, new, so I don't have all the answers. You're but new. And I do know that it's two associations, and the fields it, are not close together. And that, well, true. You know, yeah. so, and when they need the equipment, we probably do too, because our seasons go That's on at true. the same That's time. That's true. Is there any um, relationship at all? Is there any sharing or? No, not really. I mean,. <laughs> We well, share, like yes. we talk to them. It's not like we're, yeah. you know, anti. And I understand baseball. because if um, you have a child on baseball, that's yep. where you're at. And right. softball, it's it's not going to naturally easily mix. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Hey. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Awesome. For, thank, thank you, you for guys. attending. Thank you. Okay. How long has the softball organization been in existence? Um. Well, we are a fairly new association. It used to be ran um, by and, uh, Bill Langford, I think is his name. I can't remember. Um, and it was just a one-man show. And two years ago, um, he stepped down. And so we've kind of taken it from a one-man to a board of directors now to where there's more accountability and more um, just eyes on the girls program so we can grow it. So um, I would say our association has been in business for two years. Would it, would it be inappropriate, unreasonable, out of line to ask the baseball uh, organization 
if you could borrow their tractor to use it, you know, to line up convenient times to borrow it? It No, I guess that would not be inappropriate. I I'm think, just thinking. I think um, when you mentioned that you both are playing at, at the, the same, same time. It, yeah, when, when we need I it. see a challenge. Like our field, we have one field that is located over by the Eagle um, Hotel bar area. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is over across the street um, where the salt or sand thing is um, and over by the volleyball and basketball courts so just to take that equip that tractor over and back and forth is you know a lot so if we're gonna try to do it with baseball and they have I don't know two or three fields themselves I think that would just be a lot well, to here, coordinate here, here's the thing that I need to admit okay I don't know anything about softball or, <laughs> or, or uh, raking a field, yeah. you know, or how often it has to be done. Um, so. it, it occurs every time before a game. Right. So anytime somebody's going to use that field, we have to go out and rake the fields to make Parent. sure all of the rocks are off, you know, all of the debris from overnight or whatever is off to give the girls a nice playing surface so they don't get hurt. I would imagine the uh, additional use of that, of that equipment would double the cost of maintenance as well. And they would frown upon the fact that they're going to pay maintenance on a piece of equipment that you're using. Exactly. It'd be nice. It yes. really would be nice. But I understand. It's, yeah, it's I hard totally to get understand. parents because these are all volunteers. 100%. So it's hard to get them to, all right, we're going to go out, you know, at this time and, and do the work and then to coordinate between two associations right. and make sure everybody, because they got to get to soccer or they got other things. The, the last thing, because this was a late edition. Yes, I'm sorry. And I know there were specific, there's specific paperwork, specific timelines mm -hmm. for applying. And do you feel confident that you, do you know what's required and do you feel confident that um, you'll we'll get it done so I filled out the first initial application online today um, and other than that that's all I know that I need to do so your guidance there would be great yeah, if you um, you know it's through the Dauphin County Department of Economic and if you get in touch with them they'll help you oh, with okay. all the cutoff dates okay. yeah because I think the yeah, next I know one it's July 7th I believe is a cutoff date or July 8th Yes. They, they, it, it was it's delayed this year for some reason at the county say, level but it, uh yeah you'll have to also do a pre-application meeting with them which is the most yeah. i'd say most important thing okay where you'll go and meet them and and uh, tell them your project and they'll kind of give you a you know a little nod or not whether or not you're uh headed in the right direction and gotcha. so and we've done this before brad because we don't administer this but we where do we direct people dolphin county department of yeah Reagan. the yeah, what yeah. Community sure. development, Dolphin County Economic Community, and they're very good. I mean, I've called in there, I've had questions on some things, and they're very good to help you. So you just they'll give you the process, they'll give you all the dates and everything that you have to do. And I can understand why you want your own. I mean, you guys probably all work, um, and you have time constraints. You know, getting off work, getting there, prepping the field before, yep. you know, because usually they start playing like at six. Correct. You know, so yeah, good. All right. Well, thank you for attending. We appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. So uh, what happens next is um, we do have a sheet with everybody on it. So what we do is uh, we each individually rate um, from one to nine. There are no names on the sheet. Then we give them to Mr. Gutschall, and he has a program that he puts them into, and then that rates them, and then that goes into the county. Am I right, Mr. Gutschall? Yeah, uh, next week the board will uh, adopt a resolution which kind of formalizes the ranks and um, then we will uh, give them to each applicant and also send them to the county so that the county has our ranking. And yep. Yep. Okay. So again, thank you all for participating. We really appreciate it. Okay. Next on the agenda, first presentation of Ordinance 2024-05, approving appointment of Portnoff Law Associate and setting fees for collection of delinquent real estate taxes. Mr. Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
These, uh, actually, this and the next item kind of go together. There's three separate documents that we have with these two um, first presentation items here tonight. All three are going to be proposed for next week's business agenda, provided uh, the board is okay with that. I'll give you a little background in relation to the, the crux of why we're here tonight to talk about this matter. So as you're well aware, and public is well aware, as a means to save residents roughly about $1.7 million a year, the township absorbed the billing, collection, and customer service functions of Penn Waste uh, in the solid waste and recycling contract that was executed in uh, the summer of 2023. Now fast forward, we're nearing our anniversary point with that contract, and we have about $361,000 in outstanding unpaid delinquent accounts. Now, 361,000 is roughly about 6% of what we build to date. Again, not a terrible number, but you know, certainly one that accumulates over time if not appropriately dealt with. So while we have been handling the billing and collection and of course delinquent notices as well as penalty on those accounts, uh, we then reach crossroads as far as where we want to go from here. Now, the township has the ability to cease service on these accounts and issue citations to the magistrate. But this process is it's very administratively burdensome. And oftentimes, it, it doesn't really solve these collection issues, and you just start the clock over again. The township can also lien a property. But what a lien does is it really creates just a future protective interest in the property that could take decades to actually collect those funds. And again, once you place the lien, additional funds will just continue to accumulate unpaid at that time. Also, the lien doesn't do much until an actual action is forced on that lien. And again, that takes legal activities and functions and, and time. So ultimately, to aid the collections and the legal process surrounding that, the Township and Authority has sought uh, Portnoff Law Associates. Uh, the authority itself acted here at the end of May um, to shift their collections, liens, and bankruptcy agent support from three separate parties. Uh, consolidated with Portnoff. The firm works with over 200 municipalities and related governmental agencies within this state. They're only within this state and this is the only thing that that firm does. All costs that uh, are incurred by Portnoff as part of this process are billed back to the delinquent accounts and the township would only have a per account $40 fee which we would front which again that is reimbursed through the process as it progresses. Now, ultimately, their process is built to focus on structuring payment and hardship arrangements with these. Uh, the majority of their accounts are satisfied through building those relationships, building those payment plans, and closing out those delinquent accounts. Uh, in the issue that they run into struggling with a uh, non-responsive party or defiant party, they then have procedures in place to within that same house take those collections and convert them over to a physical lien, and if necessary, uh, a judgment on the lien, sheriff sale, and the sale of a property. Now, in relation to the sheriff sale process, uh, Portnoff statistics will show that roughly on an annual basis, 0.2% of their collections actually go to the list for sheriff sale. And at that point, leading to an actual sheriff sale, only 0.03% of their accounts, or about two dozen across the entire state, actually would go to sale in a physical year. So again, it's, it's again, the statistics really support this as being a process focused on the collection and developing payment arrangements with the individuals and managing those to get folks out of a, a back delinquent status. Now, as, as part of that, it also gave us the ability to talk to Portnoff about some other assistive services. Uh, one being um, uh, the real estate tax side of uh, the equation, and the other being code enforcement. So I'll talk about code enforcement for a second. Uh, with code enforcement, we have a number of nuisance violations which you know address blight, uh, inability to take care of grass and high weeds and things of that nature where code enforcement has to go out and contract for that work to be done. The township outlays those money turn around and bills the property owner if unpaid, a lien would be placed. As you can imagine, we've got decades of outstanding liens that have been uncollected because of a lack of change of property or you know, a vacant owner. Uh, again, by shifting that function to Portnoff, they could manage that process where we would essentially just have to do the initial code uh, remediation 
and then the billing, and then they would take it from there with doing the collection, the lien, and ultimately moving that property, which could have a very great benefit with blight management within the community. Lastly, we have the real estate tax shift, and this is something, again, Portnoff has specialized in over the last couple decades. So within the county-based system that we have in the Commonwealth, the county typically takes over the delinquents for the municipalities as well as the school districts within that county. They charge a 5% collection fee on that. With the resolution that is before you to consider for next week, we would shift that collection burden from the county over to Portnoff. And what this does is it still provides the county with their 5% commission rate, but it enables Portnoff to use a quicker process to turn properties over that are delinquent in their taxes that, again, either uh, are negligent or defiant about payment arrangement type plan. Still goes through that same process. It's always payment arrangement and hardship arrangements to help individuals and only as a last resort to go through the lien and judgment process. So in relation to that, they work with several uh, agencies within the county already where they collect those real estate uh, delinquencies. And this would be for any delinquency for this new levy year moving forward. And the county has a great relationship there. They still get paid. They actually pay, get paid quicker because Portnoff turns the properties quicker. You're familiar with the county process. They essentially wait three years until the point that they would actually go through with notification for a sheriff sale. With Portnoff, that process would typically work around six to nine months, depending on how quickly they can make contact with the individuals, set up plans, and individuals would adhere to those, adhere to those plans. And as, as you saw, the statistics show very little does end up going to physical sheriff sale. Only those that are completely defined, maybe even completely vacated or absent owners. Um, so in relation to it, you, we have essentially three documents. We have the contract with Portnoff for the general services to the township. We have the ordinance, which is required to establish the fees and rates that would be charged to the delinquent owner at any step within the process. Again, those charges only occur when they reach those physical steps. So an individual that signs a payment arrangement plan with them, I believe the fee is something like $25 just to establish the plan. If it doesn't go beyond that and they satisfy, they don't have the additional you know, required services to have uh, you know, filings with the court system and, and, and so forth. Uh, just as, as a side comment in relation to the fees that the individuals are paying now, it's very comparable. In fact, a, a little bit less, especially for those that go a little deeper in the process. Um, this is actually a function on the authority side based on much higher dollar amounts for sewer and stormwater. This is going to save the delinquent individuals a lot of money versus what the previous collection model was. And again, the hope is that the relationship uh, turns the collections even sooner on our behalf. When it comes to refuse, uh, the last point I make is, so we're, as a general fund, we're fronting the money for refuse. We're billed every month from Penn Waste. So we carry about you know a quarter of a million dollars in, in these delinquent accounts, and that's inability to pay those pen waste bills but then pulls from a general fund to satisfy those as that gets bigger that's just more money from general fund to subsidize that that lack of cash collection so we want to be able to make sure we can keep the process turning and you know only have those three months uh, lag with regards to the overall costs of the operation and I'll certainly uh, be willing to take any questions from the board and, and thank you for uh, your time uh, Mr. Miller, we have about what seventeen thousand trash customers, a little over. It's about sixteen seven. Sixteen thousand seven. Okay, so with that three hundred and sixty-one thousand, how many households? Uh, I mean, I hate to put you on the spot. Do you know approximately? How many households? What that that the three hundred and sixty-one that we are behind? Okay, that aren't paying us. Approximately, how many households does that encounter? Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head with regards to how many we're looking at. I'm, I'm sure it's, it's in the mid hundreds. Okay. Because uh, again, a lot of the, a lot of what that number includes is delinquents that are beyond the 90 day period. Okay. Um, we've had through, through the last billing, we've already gone through the, uh, the, the par period with those bills during the discount period. So that number is, is purely delinquents that are at least 45 to 60 days old and the majority of those funds are okay. you know over 90 into the 120 plus 
And then I just have a question about the codes. So our codes officer would go out and issue, um, first of all, would let them, I think it's like a 10-day thing before they have to, you know, they have to, they get another letter about cutting the grass and stuff. Is that what you're talking about, codes? So then would they not file any citations at the MDJ's office? Would Portnoff take care of that from then on? Well, they would still file the citations still locally. File the citation. Because again, okay. even even with remedying the, the efforts, the, the code structure is there to consider the time invested by okay. that code officer to go out, address the issues, generate the letters, perform the process and again without without the magistrate process in those instances oftentimes we can't get change okay, okay. just wanted to make sure I was just curious I didn't think that part of it was taken out but I was just okay. uh, Ford? Sam you said uh, currently delinquents are collected ultimately by the county for real estate taxes yeah and yes we would suspend that yes the other way but there is, <laughs> the county currently gets a 5% commission Correct. But even after we suspend it, you said they would continue to get? Yes, that's written in the tax code for the county. Not every county is structured that way. Most of them are. So again, regardless of who collects that tax, they will get the delinquent commission on that tax. That's the way most counties are within the Commonwealth. <laughs> so that's we would, interesting. Yeah, we would be paying the, paying the attorney to do it, but yet the county would be getting 5% and not have to do any paperwork? Well, in, in essence. In essence, what happens is all those funds are paid by the delinquent taxpayer. Yeah, so they pay right. their bill, the penalty, the interest, the delinquent 5% fee to the county, mm -hmm. as well as Portnoff's fee in addition to that. You know how many municipalities are going down the road, we're going down, and, and the county is collecting a 5% commission on within our county with portnoff there's only four other groups now they're pretty sizable so again it's it's taken a nice burden chunk off of them um but throughout the commonwealth most of their relationships are in counties where the county still gets the fee and, and a lot of times that can relate to that county township relationship where we're not looking to take business away from the county. Right. We're just looking to better manage the process. We're not collection. affected either way, so yeah. it's okay. And and then I'm sure there's probably a reason. Um, there always is. Well, he's uh, saying it's faster. The county could take up the three years, right? There's a smart county yeah. solicitor. No, I mean, there's probably right? a reason they would say that they they still get the commission. Oh, the 5%. <laughs> well, ultimately, I think from their perspective, they invest in the people and the systems and software. There's a lot of hard costs. that doesn't really change. Okay. That Correct. doesn't change. They still have to have the software not, and the people to manage the process. They're not laying off people. They're not closing no. an office. So, okay. I, there's a reason. It just it smooths. It takes a little administrative burden off of them. And, again, it turns everything quicker. So it's it's kind of a win-win for the okay. municipal side, and again, it, it all comes down to folks working with Portnoff to make it happen. Is Portnoff local? You asked me this at authority. What what was the I answer? I did ask you that. I thought you were going to have the King answer. King of Prussia was the answer, correct? You did. Um, you thought uh, it was Philadelphia. Well, I think you had pulled it up. Did look it up. That it was, it was King of Prussia. And, King of Prussia. Uh, You're right. I did pull it up. But okay. um, Kevin Brax is, he just travels the state constantly. Okay. And, and he's been out okay. to the township a couple different times. I forgot so I asked you that, that at authority. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are there any uh, questions, any more questions from the board? This is a, uh, any questions from the public? Do we have any opportunity to negotiate our fees down? In relation to what Portnoff is proposing? Yes. Uh, that's kind of their structure to ensure that they can get satisfied to keep doing what they're doing. As I mentioned, if you go through the fees schedule and you compare it against our current solicitor fees schedule, it, it is less. They collect all that delinquent funds. That's a lot of diving boards. <laughs> <laughs> well, the county's getting that 5% too, so. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay, first presentation. Okay, uh, so the next one is a first presentation of Resolution 20 for Mr. Gutschall. It just says XX. Cor right, right. Okay. We don't have that numbered yet. Okay, yeah, you don't have yeah, the number. Okay. Yeah. Um, directing right. Dolphin County Tax Claim Bureau to suspend collection of delinquent lower packs and township real estate taxes, and that's just what Mr. Miller had um, explained. Do you have any other questions um, for Mr. Miller since he did it all, all in one? Any questions from the public that is still here? No? Okay. So I think they'll be ready for, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
So when are we looking to implement this? After next week when we vote on it. Yeah. That's, That's correct. Voted. Yeah. And it's after we after uh, Portnoff is appointed. There's probably about a month and a half with administration and coordinating. You know our digital records, their digital records, so we can import and transmit details, and then setting a, a plan for dealing with uh, currents and eldest and how to manage that process. So it's a, it's kind of a slow roll in, but then it'll get to the point where it's very very cyclical and, and consistent. Okay. Six weeks from now. Fairly, fairly, yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, announcements, board members. Okay, uh, we will be having a ribbon cutting on Thursday at 11 o'clock at our new Brightville Park um, facility with a beautiful playground equipment, um, new basketball courts, uh, new, um, trying to think what else is there, the new, um, I know there's not a new concession stand, oh my gosh. What else is there? They just added. Did you mention the playground? I, the playground, I, playground. The, the basketball courts. Oh, and the restrooms. I knew there was one yeah. more thing. Yep, the restrooms, the new restrooms. So if you're not. Oh, that's a good question. They were there at the uh, pavilion. That I don't, I don't know. think so. I don't, yeah. I don't think we did any pavilion work. I don't believe so. Yeah, I think it was just the, the, uh, the equipment yeah. and everything surrounding yeah, it. But I we'll check that so. out on uh, Thursday at 11 o'clock. So, okay. Any public? We're good. All right, our next meeting will be uh, next week. That'll be a business meeting for the supervisors and that'll be at seven o'clock in this room. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Yeah.